You are now listening to the hottest true crime podcast in the streets. Hello, folks, and welcome to Tales from the Hood, the affirmative murder mini sods. Um, I'm so excited the, at the reception that we're getting from this. We're getting a lot of emails coming in. People are really enjoying the idea of not only two episodes a week now, friend, but just the idea of, you know, hearing from listeners and people telling their stories mm-hmm. and, and things like that. I'm really excited. Are you people, you seeing people, the feedback, people enjoying being able to tell their stories and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I think a lot of people love the, not just us, but I think a lot of listeners love the fan or listener interaction yeah, yes. type of thing. They like so. the engagement. Yeah, they like yeah, feel yeah. part of it. And yeah. we want that because, you know, we wouldn't be here without the listeners. So why not let them be, you know, let's not break the for- let's break the fourth wall and have you physically actually be a part of the podcast yeah. with your words. Um, so let's go ahead and not waste any time. This is actually a fun email. Got from a uh, listener. Her, her name is Carolyn. Um, and uh, what she said was, my ears perked up at the mention of TJ's snacks during... Uh, Tales from the Hood, which because we mentioned Cacio, Cacio Pepe chips, which we were eating mm. uh, in between recording. Yeah, delicious. Yes, very good. And uh, she said, would love to hear more from you guys as far as snacks for some lighter content. Uh, I'll give my answers, too, in case you want to shit on them. So uh, the questions are, what are your favorite TJ snacks? She said, Elote corn dippers, which are great, especially with some cowboy caviar, which is very basic, but it's good. Uh, favorite general snacks. Sweet or salty? I could. She said, "I could see Fran saying something like peanuts or grapes." Mm, I like frozen grapes. I put my grapes in the freezer. So like crunchy grapes. <clears throat> yeah, extra you, crunchy grapes. They just frozen, and then you just put them in for a little bit, and then they. Soften oh, you up. suck on them. Yeah, soften up, and then. That's interesting. That's an interesting strategy. I never heard of that. Frozen grapes. Yeah, that's that's unique. Um, and she said, "I could see Fran saying something like peanuts or grapes." Doritos is the correct answer. So that's as far as your favorite general snack. Okay. That's the only acceptable answer as far as Carolyn's concerned. Mm, all right. <clears throat> she, went to, she went on to say, how do you feel about the recentish barrage of Flamin' Hot? Ooh, hate it. Let me, mm. uh, but she, uh, well, she, she continues to say, uh, what's your favorite or least favorite of those? Like Flaming Hot as far as? Like Flamin' Hot Cheetos? Yeah, well, I get. Oh, she gives examples. So oh. she said it was fun for me. Bec- it w- it was fun for me at first because gro- growing up in Brooklyn, we didn't even have we didn't even eat Cheetos. We had cheese doodles, which I've experienced. I like yeah. a, I like a cheese doodle. I don't think it's better than a cheese a Cheeto, but I get it. Sometimes you know you got to. It's like uh, Mr. Pibb. It's, it's not Dr. Pepper, but right. it, if that's all you have, I'll have it in a pinch. Yeah. I have some cheese doodles in a pinch. Um, so cheese doodles, uh, hot fries. And Jason Jason Tatum ruffles are my favorite. That is, I didn't even know that was a, the basketball player Jason Tatum. Are those, are those like uh, rap snacks? No, it's ruffles. But ruffles. I guess he's just on the bag. They're not oh, his. Okay, yeah, it's just ruffles, and that's he's what, on the. That's what my mind went yeah, to. Yeah, like his own brand yeah. of chip. No, <laughs> yeah. like no, I think he's just the spokesperson for the chip at the time. There'll be yeah. Zion Williamson ruffles. That's uh, some. I think I don't. I think yeah, it they don't have like Michael Jordan's Wheaties. No, it's yeah, like, it's, just, it's just Wheaties, and he's on the, he's on the box. box. Yeah, he's 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 on the box this month. Yeah, I don't think they're Jason Tatum's flavored. You know, like, <laughs> I think they're just flaming hot ruffles. Yeah. and Jason Tatum is on the bag. Yeah, I, but. Hey, listen, I'm not here to judge. If that's what you... Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe I don't know before. Jason Tatum's endorsements. He might have his own brand of ruffle. Yeah. Anyway, uh, she said, I don't remember if this, if, that, if this was real or a nightmare, but I think I saw a flaming Hot Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Ugh. That sounds disgusting. Uh, I'm allergic to cinnamon, so I don't get the same oh. joy that literally everyone else in the world gets from CTC. Cinnamon Damn. Toast Crunch. But I, can, I can't imagine that the flaming Hot... I can't imagine the flaming hot not being fucking disgusting. Thanks for maybe sharing, Carolyn. Mm. So, how do you feel about? I, I don't know because I know you've seen these videos. People will take like chicken and dust it in flaming hot Cheeto dust, yeah. and fry it. It's flaming hot, flaming hot burgers. Like yeah. it's really become like a thing. And I don't like flaming hot Cheetos that much. Nor do, I don't eat them at all, honestly. But like, have you seen the like trend? Yeah, I've seen of flaming hot everything. Yeah. Really unhealthy. I it's got to be terrible for your stomach. Them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. flaming hot Cheetos was delicious back in the day. I used to eat those high school. But, in high school, but I used to have to eat them. I couldn't eat. You know how when you eat just some Doritos, you eat one, mm-hmm. boom, boom. Flaming hot Cheetos, I had to like throw them back, throw them back. Yeah, because I couldn't. I wouldn't you be long able to lasting. Eat it. Yeah, yeah the heat would catch up with you yeah, eventually. Man. Just yeah, me. Knock them down. I used to take a, take a chicken patty sandwich from high school, take two mayonnaise packets, boom, boom, throw it on the chicken patty, throw a bag of flaming hot Doritos on there, smash. Get a nice and smash into the chicken, mm. and then that was my lunch 
sometimes I would do lettuce on top of that and then, you know, go to town. So I was kind of ahead of the the flaming Hot Cheeto infusion before anybody was. Yeah. You know, I was kind of ahead of the curve on that. But now that I'm, I was also 16 years old and had a stomach of steel <laughs> and would just eat shit, fall on the floor, yeah. take a hot dog, put cheese on it. Like just, just crazy shit that I would never do now. I would fucking be in the bathroom for days. Yeah. So as an adult now, when I see people making flaming Hot Cheeto, Cheeto burgers and or those burgers that, like, when you cut into them, all the cheese shoots out of them. Like, everything. Like, there's a real cheese obsession these days and flaming hot. You ever had chicken nuggets with cheese in them? God, no. It would. I would be in the bathroom for days. Well, now, yeah. I didn't have it when I was a kid either. But I think that would be a line for me, chicken and cheese. I think you, but you could, though. Except you, Alfredo or something. I think it could, though, back in the day. Your body was more resilient when you were younger than, Possibly. than now. I won't deny that. But, Fran, what are your favorite? You're not really a Trader Joe's. Got I it. like the only thing I remember I got from there was the, the Reese's, the like, like kind of Reese's the little cups. Reese's cups. You those did like those. Delicious. I would get those for me from time to time. For yes. me, it's the chocolate peanut butter pretzels all day. Those you, I've. I think I've had those too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, but I also like strawberries with cookie butter. Okay, the cookie butter is out of this world. I don't really know what you put it on. It's so decadent and bad for you that I try to kind of balance it out by eating it with fruit. Mm. That makes me feel better instead of eating cookie butter with cookies or something like yeah. that. I eat the cookie butter with strawberries. Or like sometimes I do apples. That'll be good. Like dip Sounds things. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Cook because the cookie butter is really good. But um, what is your favorite general snack? And is it grapes or peanuts? Peanuts. It's like you're sixty five or something. I eat both. I like, like, I like honey I like, roasted. I like salted peanuts. I like salted peanuts. How you feel about honey roasted though? Not, not a honey a roasted fan, guy. Not a fan. I'm I respect some it. salted peanuts type. Guy. This is um this is I get in this argument with people a lot where it's like I like kettle corn. A lot of people don't like kettle corn. Mm-hmm. I like salted butter popcorn too. Yeah. But I like a sweet peanut, and I like a sweet popcorn. Uh, Not caramel corn. Ke- kettle corn's a little more subtle. Caramel corn's delicious. Caramel corn's delicious, but it's decadent. Kettle corn is like just a little sweet. Nah. Okay. I get nah. it. But I'm a honey roasted peanut guy. But frozen grapes is delicious. Have you, you need to try it. Give them both, throw them in the freezer. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I hear you. My favorite snack in general, I hate to be basic or whatever, but it's it's uh, peanut butter and apples. That's my my favorite. I love taking a jar of peanut butter. Yeah, like apple too. slices. I take that for just lunch. Scoop it. It's a nice snack. With Healthy, heavy, snack. dense. Or the not the amount of peanut butter I eat on these apples. Scoop it. Just peanut butter globbing on those things yeah. and just throw them back. Still healthy. That's protein yeah. up in there. True. That's a good point. Um, I also like. I found. Uh, let me let me be fun about it because I'm I'm, the th- I'm trying to I'm thinking of the things I eat on the, I eat on a day to day basis yeah. which are like. But I just I do want to say I I can't I don't think I don't know how how long I can hold this in. Reese's man, I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. Have you tried the Reese's lately? No. When less, they did I something, have not. A, a listener sent us a box of the Reese's that have chips in them. Yeah. And they were so disgusting that I have not had a Reese's in general since then. I don't it know. It like ruined it. It like, I couldn't believe that made they made something like that. Yeah. And it was like, I kind of am protesting. They changed it. I don't, they did something. What is the chocolate, the chocolate or the peanut butter? I think the chocolate. It's they, off. It's off, man. So I just. It tastes more artificial or like. It doesn't have that sweet chocolatey. It's, get, it's getting lost in the shuffle. Yeah, it like, kind of like, like they the trying to. More. I don't know if they're trying to make it more healthy. I don't know what, mm. what where they're going with it, but it's, it's not, the reasons is definitely not the same. You know something? Now that you said it's crazy because now you mentioned that when we're saying what's your favorite general snack and you didn't say reasons. It's not the same. It's crazy to me. Now it's, you say that. Yeah, wow. Because uh, that would of course be your answer two yes, years ago. Would it's be Reese's. Caramel cream is now man. Caramel. What's that? It's like the caramel with the white cream is inside. I don't even know what that is. You know what like a cream saver. No, oh, it's caramel with the outside and cream and inside. You, it's white. It's brown. You've seen it before. No, nah, I never heard this in my life. You talking about cream? Some, is delicious. That's man. what it's called—a caramel cream. Yeah, caramel creamers. Caramel creamers. Yeah. First of all, that's obscene. I don't like how that sounds. <laughs> um, but no, I've never heard of this. Um, boom. Oh wow! Like cow tails. Delicious. You like those? Delicious, man. Oh, that's like a snack for like a sixty-year-old person. I go to Vori Farms. Get they come in like little. Yeah. Like, get like. Two I know them. the. I only know them as the cow tails. I never had them broken up into little mm. bite-sized little chewables like that. I know the whole tail. <laughs> oh man. I know the whole tail caramel with the cream going man. down in and you bite it and. Wow, that's what you like. Delicious. Get a nice little ginger ale. A what? <laughs> ginger ale. Yeah. Okay. You want ginger, to say it? A ginger ale? Yes, man. Ginger ale. Ginger ale. Yeah, okay. Delicious. C yeah. grams ginger ale because that's the best. C grams? Ale. Yes, it's the best ginger ale. You are killing me right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, C grams ginger ale. Uh, no, yes. Okay, so general snack for me, apples and peanut butter. General snack okay. for you, caramel creamers. Yes. Favorite TJ snack, you like the authentic 
Yes. Natural Reese's that Natural, they offer there. Yes. Yeah. Delicious. I think they're just called peanut chocolate peanut butter cups or something. You like the dark chocolate ones, right? No, I hate oh, Okay, the milk the milk chocolate one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I thought that was a weird little I twist to it. Chocolate. You like the milk chocolate ones. Okay. And for me, Trader Joe's chocolate peanut butter pretzels for sure. Top of the list for me. Um so yeah, so Carolyn, thanks for that. Very nice email. Um that was fun. Change of pace. Yeah, different. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, it was different. And uh, now we're going to move on to something just as different, but okay. in, in a weirder way. The The title of this one is called Devils and the Dolls. Mm. This is from a listener named Bree, right? Okay. Like the cheese. Uh, the message says, hello, my name is Bree. You can use my name. <laughs> she put LOL. I used to do uh, oddity art, like really weird shit from creepy clown paintings to creating shrunken heads out of clay. But I always had a fascination with weird dolls. I would usually buy dolls from the thrift stores or eBay. I bought so many and dissected so many dolls. I thought at least one potentially could be haunted, but I didn't really think anything would happen. I do believe in the supernatural, but feel like there's a, a logical explanation for most things. I like that. Personally, I never really had any experiences that were obviously supernatural or unexplainable until one night. I was sleeping like any other night, like we all do, and I heard a child's voice loud and clear talking to me. I don't like kids talking and that they aren't supposed to be there. There's no kids in my house. LOL. What the fuck? I thought I was dreaming and my eyes widened. I was awake trying to gain clarity. I heard the laughing continue. Don't you want to play? Followed by more giggling. I'm moving. I'm burning the house down. But I'll continue. Yeah. I sat there in the dark trying to grab my phone and to put my light on to see if anything was in my room. Nothing but silence. I was so creeped out, I went into my art supplies bin and grabbed, the, grabbed all the dolls I had, frantically checking to see if any of them had the little voice box inside. Nope, nothing. I threw every doll away I had <laughs> after that. I attached a couple of pictures of my art as well. And also, I love, you. I love the show. You guys are the only reason I don't hate Mondays. Thanks for the read. And wow, Fran, let me just go ahead and scroll past. That's one of the little shrunken head dolls in a Beauty and the Beast Rose jar. She made the Beauty and the Beast jar from Rose. I mean, Rose jar from Beauty and the Beast. That's a snake skin and a baby doll head. Are you a demon? This this feels like seance stuff. There's another. Uh, wow. Um, crazy. Very talented, but yeah. oh, terrifying. I would never put this. Oh, God, oh. no. Nope. All right, cool. That's a doll baby on a like a salad of babies. Uh, no. Um, thank you so much, Bree. You are very talented, but I would never um, want that in my house. Maybe she got like a uh, very specific clientele, Toy Story type of situation going on in that, in that house. Yeah, like when like she's, she's not they paying just attention, wake up, yeah, playing around. This is why you shouldn't have a bunch of toys in your house because that could happen when you don't know what you're doing when all those toys aren't they, when they think you aren't paying attention. Yeah, Chucky taught me that. <laughs> Good guy, my ass. This holiday, whether you're making a Kroger Simple Truth Turkey for 40 or a Murray's Baked Brie for two, Kroger has fast, fresh delivery and free pickup so you can make holiday meals that bring you all together to create memories that last. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. Get more ways to save at the buy five or more, save $1 each sale. Just buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. So real quick, got another DM from uh, a person. This one was interesting, short but interesting, very much interesting, uh, from a listener named, named Anya. Uh, again, feel free to DM the podcast Instagram, but the email is affirmativemurder at gmail.com. It does help to kind of keep things succinct in one, in one location and everything like that, but that's fine. This is a DM, and that's cool. So Anya says, <clears throat> I have a quick tale. I received a dick pic in the mail. Whoa. Yes, via USPS. In the mail? In the mail, <laughs> not email. That's crazy. The mail, a physical Express, di- uh, picture. Somebody like printed Express out an envelope. Yes. Gotta rip it open. Somebody <laughs> printed out a picture of their dick via USPS. That's crazy. So this is you. This is your homie. This is your crew. Uh, this happened about a day or two before the first shutdown happened and the pandemic kicked off. I went to check my I went to check my mail and on my way back to my apartment, I noticed that the envelope was very thin and was a little weird. Had glue all over it. Oh, I hope it was glue. Sure, that was, I don't, I don't was know glue. if that was glue. Uh, I had glue. All, oh God. Oh. Had glue all over it and was oddly dry and crispy. Oh, yeah, it, it was glue. glue. It wasn't glue. That wasn't that glue. Wasn't glue. <laughs> wasn't Anya, glue Anya, that wasn't glue. Uh, oh, baby girl, that wasn't glue. Anyway, uh, oh god, 
Uh, when I opened it, there was an eight and a half by 11 full page in color picture of a man I don't know with a cap covering most of his face and his chest and cut off right in the and cut off right in the middle of his you know what. This was the only thing in the envelope and the return address was glued on glue. I'm not sure it was glue. Was glued we'll say glue. Was glued on was a glued on sticker of someone else's business info. So like they covered it up with like something else, I guess. It was also addressed to my full name and address, including my apartment number. So I was pretty freaked out. The version of my name used seemed like the guy got the info from my resume. So even creepier. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it's like a way that your name is said that pe- people that know you don't call you like your full name or something like that. Yeah. Also, that right. information is not public when you live in an apartment. You can't find that like online. What do you mean? If you live in an apartment, you can't find this person. Because you can look up somebody's address. I can find somebody's residential address. Right. If you live in an apartment that you rent, you can't find that information name. on the internet. You can't find oh, that they are staying there. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Um, but yeah, my best friend's mom told me to report it to the cops. I called, and at first they thought I was trying to report a dick pic from text, which I didn't even know was an option. I guess you can follow reporting about that. When I clarified, they were like, what the hell? So yeah, I had to show two male cops in my apartment the envelope and giant dick pic. Okay, well, I mean, you don't need to compliment the guy. <laughs> <laughs> was the picture just, was I guess the, the, it's an 8 by 12 Was that a, the, a big picture or you know, Yeah I don't We don't need to rehash yeah. her I don't want her to This is traumatizing She said her. it not, She did just, She did say it So I don't yeah. want to, Let's just You can DM us again And I won't I won't do a, a follow up But like Do you mean the dick was big Or the picture was a, a big Printed out picture of a dick Yeah 8 by 12 seems like That's I mean That's a pretty big size Dick pic When especially when you Mostly people get them on their phones mm. So that's like 3 by Five by two or something like that. I don't even know. I don't know how big a phone is. I also don't know how to measure things. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, they referred me to the USPS investigative team. Yeah, you remember what, what, you, what are they called? Postal, the postal police. police. Yeah, yeah. We went to the postal museum. They had like postal postman bulletproof vests yeah. and stuff. I didn't know that was a division. Of, that needs to be a show, and you need to star in it, like hey. CSI or Criminal Minds, but for the mail. Yeah. No, nah, you would kill that. That would be fun. Yeah, like yeah, somebody, somebody sending up. Cut off hair in the mail. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that stuff happens all the time. Yeah, for sure. And they call the postal police uh, or the USPS investigative team, since they technically, since it technically, since there technically wasn't a crime, he wasn't in, he wasn't in the middle of a specific act, which is, she means sending the picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I never moved forward with it since the world shut down two late two days later. I still have it in a drawer somewhere. The picture? Yes. Why? I don't know. I would love all to right. know why. Maybe she's gonna follow up someday, or maybe it's like a, a funny story to tell. I don't know the tone of the. I don't know if she's telling this as like this is crazy and hilarious. Yeah, look at so this. I don't want to make a joke out of it if it was traumatic. But I'm what sure if it's can, like what if it's like rolled. It's like not used to roll old letters up like a scroll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She sealed it with wax and and put her her family. Did you keep the envelope? Is the question. She should have. If anything, you're gonna keep anything. You should keep the envelope. Maybe get a forensics team involved in that. But again, this could both be traumatic and like a funny anecdote that she tells yeah. people. So like yeah. both things can be true. She told us. And so, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry that happened to you, but maybe burn the picture. Maybe have a ceremony about it. Yeah. Like, get that out of there. You don't want that energy in, Yo, in your yeah, house. You don't want that. Yeah, yeah. But unless it's always funny to bring up to people. You know, yeah. it might be a, a funny little thing to do. You, know, you can have people over, open up some wine. Do you want to see this crazy picture this weirdo sent me? I don't know. I don't know what you do with your life. But Anya, thank you so much for sending that. That's that crazy. It was very wild. She don't don't have no idea where it came from. No, and again, I I, I speak to this a lot, but I'm like, uh, listen, man, I don't get the confidence in sending dick pics. But you got to be a very specific type of guy. You've mentioned you've done it before in your past in life, and it's just like, I just it's bold, man. I I, I it's a boldness that I just I envy, man. I don't know. It's it's crazy. I don't I don't have that kind of gumption in me. Yeah. I mean, but sending an unsolicited dick pic, I mean, dick no, picture, sending, it's, it's cr- sending an unsolicited dick, mic, dick pic through the U.S. Postal yeah, Service. That's is, the person that you don't know. It's different. Somebody asked for it. That's crazy. Somebody yeah, asked for this. Somebody asked for yours, obviously, yeah. right? You're not a creep, right? No. Nah, I'm just, nah. just making sure. I don't want yeah, to put smut on your name. No, nah, I'm doing yeah, You don't send unsolicited dick You would nah, never send an unsolicited. Not. Yes. Even solicited, though. Let me be clear as well. I meant solicited. I'll, I always mean solicited, <laughs> but I would never send a solicited. If somebody asked me, I'll go, oh, it's not really my thing. I don't yeah. do that, you know? Um, it's not really my style, but anyway, <laughs> uh, we got another one. Okay, uh, and we're gonna save the other ones for for next time because we, we don't we don't we don't want to we don't want to empty the clip, you know. So this one's from Tanya. The, their email says, "Hello, Alvin and Fran. My name is Tanya. I sort of grew up a crime junkie thanks to my dad. My youth consisted of stories about Richard Ramirez because we lived in East Los Angeles, pushing my cousin down as he jumped the fit." Fe- jumped the fence in my grandma's yard in his efforts to elude the citizens of my neighborhood that eventually caught the bastard. 
she grew up in the neighborhood. You remember he he like ran away from yeah. the police and the, the the community caught him. Yeah, she's saying her cousin got pushed down by this guy while he was trying to escape. Richard Ramirez. That's crazy. Jesus, talk about proximity. Before my very first date, my dad had me watch the Ted Bundy movie. As I headed out the door, he he pulls me in and says, "Remember me, hot." Oh, well, okay. let me see. <clears throat> Spanish. Remember me. I was like, I was like, who's me? Who's Mija? <laughs> Uh, remember, Mika. Even the good-looking ones can be bad. Okay. Simple. Mm-hmm. That's simple dad advice. I like that. Uh, that's an, that's enough of that. Let me take you back to the to a time into a small California desert town in 1995 when I was eight. I lived close to my elementary school growing up. In a house of five kids, I was the youngest. I always had my sister to walk to school with me, and this particular year, I was on my own as she had moved up to middle school. Luckily, I had a classmate that lived on the same street as I did, so we used to use the buddy system to get home. This particular week, we were all on edge. There was a note sent home that there were two men in a blue and white van that recently moved to the area and were sex offenders. We were told to use extra caution, and I'm sure it didn't didn't help matters any, as I rambled about the possibility of abduction making my poor walking buddy queasy. So she's a true crime junkie, so she's, she's talking about the worst possible scenarios to this other little kid yeah. who doesn't know the shit that you know. So making your friend terrified. As we turn the corner, we see two men, a white van with a blue stripe. The men are, see- the men are seeming to paint those electrical boxes on the end of the street by the light post. We both freeze dead in our tracks. Look at each other. Look at the men who are very clearly staring at us as they paint the electrical boxes. Their paintbrushes move up and down and up and down with complete disregard to the task they're doing. So basically just like pretending to still be painting, but looking at them, which Mm -hmm. is, that's terrifying. It's like something out of The Shining. Just staring. At the time and all these years later, I feel that the worst part of the, I feel that's the worst part of the story. Yeah, that is, that's, that's creepy for sure. I can remember his face so vividly staring, thinking, why is he still painting? Why is he staring at at us so much and he's still painting? Mm -hmm. We both feel uneasy. We play it cool. Continue to walk past them in silence. Yeah, no, we yeah do something or go another route. I would not walk past them, but they continue. We continue to walk past them in silence. Once we get past the corner, we book it, running like hell until our lungs burned. We stop in front of my house to catch our breath. I tell her to come inside and wait for them to leave. She grew up in a very strict household and insisted her parents would never believe why she was late if she told them the truth. I told her to run as fast as possible home, and, I, and I'd watch her from my driveway. Good friend. Yeah. Good friend. Always make sure your friends get home safe in any situation. She takes off down the road. As I watch as she races home, I look back and see the men very hurriedly pack their items in their creepy van and hop in. They drive down the street faster Uh-oh. than anyone should be driving in a residential area. I eventually lose sight of both her and the van. I run in and tell my mom what happened, and she didn't think much of it. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. Did the letter get home? I need. They said they sent the letter home. As soon as my older brother came home from high school, I begged him to walk with me down the street so I can make sure my friend was okay. We get to the door, and there's no answer. Uh I'm assuming whoever was home saw a creepy cholo at the door. (laughs) This is a brother. Uh, Saw a creepy cholo at the door and said, No, thank you. I will not be answering that and ignored us. LOL. We went home with no answers. That's oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, you don't yeah. know if your friend's okay. Right. We went home with no answers. I see my walking buddy the next day and thankfully she Ooh. was okay. But she did say she ran into her home and locked the do- and looked out the window and saw the van drive by very slowly staring at their house. Oh shit. Ooh, yeah. The 90s were something else, let me tell you. Thanks for letting me share this story. Uh keep up keep up what y'all are doing. It's appreciated. We need a name for Alvin's fans, though. I don't no, like we that don't. word. I don't. I don't like either of those no, words. We don't. we don't need that, or f- you're not fans. Uh, for Alvin's fa- fans, though, Fran has fanatics. Mm-hmm. What about Alvin? Alvin is just he people need that any. listen to the podcast. No, he doesn't and need those, That's fine with me, and thank you. Shout out to the fanatics. Shout out to the fanatics, and I'm fine. Just like keep listening to. Just keep doing what you're doing. We so don't. I'm guessing the the little girl was home. But and she was scared. Just, she was scared, so yeah. she answered the door. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That would be my guess. Obviously, she can't provide that insight, but. Yeah, that would be my guess. Like, Smart. Yeah, she went and knocked Smart. on the door. She's like, fuck that. I'm under yeah. the bed. The lights are off. Nobody's home. Don't answer the door until your parents come home. You can't even fit under beds anymore. You I can't. You're I'm, an adult. I, but I don't think... But how many people have beds where it's like the bottom of it's it is... It's really high? It's really high. I don't know. That's not my experience. That a, that's not that a bed thing I have. Now? My bed has storage underneath of it, like the pull-out drawers. I don't think that's so a thing I, anymore, though. It's definitely a thing. Like, somebody's bed... 
is a little high. But I mean, like everybody used to have a high bed, though. Sure. This is anecdotal. I don't know if everybody had things have changed and things have become like a little lower. To, like the the baseboard of a bed has definitely become like lower. That's what I'm talking like, about. Or like has things around it, wood or something to make it look nice. Yeah. As opposed to just that hole of right. darkness. But, uh, that's what I'm saying though. But I'm my, sure that's my still kids a thing. can't fit under my bed anymore. Stuff can go under there. But, but what about their bed? No. Oh, their bed is, no. has like what? Has like some kind oh, of thing yeah, around they have it. A bump it. So. Oh well, that's different. And the bottom bunk doesn't have like it's not mm, elevated at all. No. Wow. Maybe they finally realized that's fucking terrifying and the bed shouldn't look like that anymore. Just having that dark space under there, plus dust bunnies, from just a more practical standpoint. Yeah. It gets a lot of dust under there if you, don't, if you have hardwood floors. Yeah. I, one thing used to scare me was uh, the taken when the, when the daughter was under the bed. That's, that, that part stuck with me for some reason. Why? Because she was under the bed hiding. Yeah. And they walked around like they didn't know she was under there. You could see their feet. And they just... Well, that's good though. That's good to have hiding spots like that in your house. Yeah, but they knew she was under there. Who doesn't look at this? Pretty. That's the first place you look yes. when you're looking for somebody is under the bed. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think it just became a superfluous thing. It's like nobody's hiding under beds anymore. Yeah. It doesn't work. If you're playing hide and go seek in the house, yeah. as I did a lot as a kid, yeah. you hide under the bed. That's the last place you hide. Yep. You're gonna get caught there first. You know. So yeah, maybe it just became a thing that's obsolete, and that's yeah. fine. We move on as a society. Yeah. But good, shout, out, good, shout out for you for going to check. No, and, and telling your his, friend his to run home. Yeah. And I'm going to watch you. But I'm glad she, because I would have had to do that too, because I, I can't, I wouldn't be able to sleep if I'm like having that on my conscience. I'm like, yeah. I don't, she, I, don't, I don't know anything. It's like, but that's worse check. though. Imagine you still go check and you still don't get the answer. So that was a rough night yeah, of sleep for, for our friend Tanya for sure. Yeah. Because she sounds like a good friend. So I'm sure she didn't, that didn't sit well with her that she didn't get confirmation. So I'm sure when she saw her at the bus stop the next day, Woo, a sigh of relief. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Jeez, man. But uh, yeah, Tanya, thank you for that. That was amazing. And with that being said, um, we, we do have a couple more emails. But again, we're going to save them for next time. We got we to spurs this out. And also, keep on sending those emails in to affirmativemurder at gmail.com with the title TFTH. That's what a lot of people are doing, TFTH. Let us know your, the tales from your hood, what's going on, what happened when you're, in your childhood growing up. Or if you want to ask questions uh, like our friend Carolyn asked about the type of snacks we eat, or just like, you know, whatever. This is a space for all kind of questions. You want to learn about me and Fran, um, this is the space to send those kind of emails, and maybe we'll get to them. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, man, this is super fun. I've been enjoying this. This is a fun little change of pace, and you get people involved. And, um, yeah, Fran, go ahead and take us out of here. Man, you got any final thoughts as far as how this went, emails you read, things like that? It was fun, man. It was fun. I like doing this every week. Um, again, send them in. Doesn't matter what it is. Just send them in. Just send them in. Send them in. Don't think about it. No. Um, until next time, we'll see you guys. Be safe. I need something else to say. I don't want to say deuces. You don't, okay, well, let's, th- let's throw a spitball before we go. Okay, let's go. Come on. You got it. Quick. Don't think about it. I don't it. know. Come on. See ya? <laughs> no. no. Let's try again. Let's see ya. Out. See ya. Out. Throw it. Throw it oh, to the side. Okay. Uh, We're moving. We're moving. We're zipping. Come um, on. We're zipping. We're moving. Come on. Uh, don't think about it. Boom, 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 on. boom. Um, We're, we want people to be safe. We want people to go. We don't want people to have weird experiences. You know, what, what do we want? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of something going with, with uh, Tales from the Hood. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, always be on the lookout. Was it always be on the lookout? Why not? Hey, man, let's bring it back. That's from like back. decades ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, listen. But this is Tales from the Hood, though. So it's like, oh. this is closer to you, home. Yes. Always be on the lookout. And it's general. It's broad. Always be on the lookout for stories that yeah. would would help here. Always yes. be on the lookout to, for protection of yourself. Yes. And, and, and yeah. creepy people and dolls. Don't have a whole bunch of dolls in your Don't house. have a bunch of dolls in Again, your house. Again, don't that's buy that's, dolls. That's how we should end it. What is the moral? What, was, what did we learn today at the end of this episode? Oh, don't buy dolls from secondhand stores or eBay because they could be haunted. Yeah. Yes. And, and check on your friends. Make sure they get home safe. And check on your friends. That's a big one. That's probably the biggest. Make sure your friends get home safe. Probably the biggest lesson of the there episode. You go. Yep. Well, until then, see ya. That's wow. <laughs> <We> just- <laughs> oh, always been like. I got caught up in what we just. <laughs> well, until then, always be on the lookout. <laughs> <laughs>